everybody, it's Sue again and it's week one of the Sweet Blossom Blanket. So I hope you've all had time to look at my introduction video from last week because if you have you'll be all prepared and ready to go with me today. If you haven't, don't worry, you can either look at it now or you can listen to the quick recap I'm going to do. So first of all you need to have this lovely yarn. So there's 10 different colours and I'm using the Bonus DK, which is 100% acrylic. It's really soft, really squishy, absolutely perfect for blankets. And hopefully you've ordered that from your favorite um, Serdar retailer and you've all got that at home. I don't know about you, I keep my yarn in a basket. So um, I've got all my colors ready to start. And you also then need your pattern, of course. So hopefully again, you've been onto serdar.com and you've downloaded your copy of the pattern. If you haven't done that, if you um, go on to serdar.com, if you put your details in, you'll get a copy of the blanket pattern emailed to you each week, so you won't even have to think about it. It'll just arrive for you in time for the following week's um, videos and tutorials. I find when I download my pattern, it's much easier to know where I'm up to if I actually have a pencil and I just tick off each row as I've completed it. And then you can always rub those pencil marks out and you've got the pattern ready to use again. Don't forget your crochet hooks as well. So you'll need two different hooks for this pattern. You'll need a five millimetre hook and a four millimetre hook. You'll only use the five millimetre for the foundation chain. That stops the beginning of your blanket getting really tight. And you'll use the four millimetre then throughout. And just a little pair of scissors. You don't need a lot of equipment at all. For the first section of the blanket, you're going to be using seven different stitches and each of the stitches is accompanied by a short tutorial. I've even done a tutorial for your foundation chain and for changing colour because in the first week you're going to be using all ten of the colours which is really exciting to see all those colours together. For the more experienced crocheters, while I'm going through the tutorials, you could just carry on and crochet to the end of the next section and then we'll all meet back up. So now I'm going to take you through each section of the blanket and each section will be released weekly. So the first section starts, starts you off very easily. You're starting off with a double crochet and that's in the cream. And each of the sections uses all 10 colours of the yarn, so you do need to make sure you're prepared. You will need it all that week. I've put a little tag here, and the week one finishes where this lovely soft grey finishes. So in this first week, you're going to learn lots of new stitches, but they're all really based on simple double crochets and simple trebles, or if you're in the US, single crochet and double crochets. And then we've just worked doing some sort of little changes with those stitches to give you some fancier stitches. So I'll take you through. So you'll start off with the double crochet in the cream. And then you're going to do this stitch, which is called a griddle stitch. And this is made up of trebles and doubles and really simple, but gives this lovely texture to your blanket. Then we're going to work onto this nice soft blue and we're going to do some V-stitch. Again, that's made up of trebles, so nothing to be fearful about. Then we've got some bobbles. And remember, with each of these stitches, I'm doing a, a tutorial for each one. And I've actually just done the tutorials on little swatches, so you can really concentrate on the stitch and you're not distracted by the whole of the blanket. So we've got the bobble stitch, and then we repeat some double crochet. So there's lots of time to really perfect stitches, and you have time to keep practicing them. So we're going to repeat some double crochet. Then we've got a new stitch here. This is the granny stitch. And then we're going to repeat some more double crochet, which is a much more sort of tightly woven stitch. And then this is one of my favorites as well. I love the bobbles and I also like this one. And this is berry stitch. And that gives these lovely little dimples and it looks really lovely on your blanket. You've got time to try the griddle stitch again. So we remember we've got the doubles and the trebles giving you that lovely texture. And then we finish off week one with some half trebles. So you'll feel such, such satisfaction getting through all of that in that first week. And you'll be amazed how quickly it grows. When you're getting onto some of these stitches like the 
the um, granny stripes, they, it grows so quickly. Just one row is a centimetre, so you'll really love doing that one. You'll really see the blanket develop. I always get quite excited when I'm starting a new band in a new colour. It's really something to work towards. And you should very easily finish this all in that first week, just working one or two hours um, a night over maybe four or five days. It really depends how quick you are at crochet. Before you start to watch the tutorials, it might be good to get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. I've got my coffee at the ready because we're going to be here for a little while, so make sure you're nice and cosy and relaxed. Most crochet blankets start with a chain, so I thought I'd show you how to do that first. But if you're not used to um, handling balls of yarn and you're not sure where to find the end, I thought I'd show you. So with this um, ball, you take the ball band off and then tucked inside here, you'll see there's the end all waiting for you. And then the yarn will just come off nicely. So to start with, we're going to make um, a slip knot. Now I'm using a hook one size bigger than I'm going to use when I make the body of the blanket. And that's so that you don't have a very tight chain and it's much easier to work into the chains if they are slightly bigger. So to start with, you need to make a slip knot. So we're going to wrap the yarn around those two fingers. So you've got a cross at the front. So at the back, you've got this nice straight band and you're going to put your hook underneath and then draw your yarn through and pull. And then there's your slip knot. And it's called that because you can make it bigger and smaller. So we'll get it to the right size for our hook and then we'll start to make our chain. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around the hook and then I'm just going to pull the yarn through that first slip knot. And I'm going to wrap it around again and pull through. And you can see we're making little chains and we don't want this to be too tight because we've got to work into each of these chains when we start our first row. So we keep wrapping the yarn round and pulling through. If you see, I'm using my thumb to sort of keep this steady. So it's round and through, round and through. And you keep on going until you've got the required number of chains. Now for this blanket, you're going to chain 133 chains. So it's quite easy to lose count or the telephone can ring or somebody needs you urgently. So what I do is I mark my chains every 10 stitches. So I'll just put that down and just show you one I've got ready here. So as you can see, I started my chain in exactly the same way, but after 10 chains, I put one of these little stitch markers in and I've continued to do that. So if you do lose count, you just have to take your chain back to the last marker and then you just count up in tens and, um, and that makes it perfect. So what I've done here, I've just got an extra one just to show you how they work. So they're like little safety pins. You just pop it through the chain and then fasten it so that stays nice and secure. Okay, so that's the starting chain. Okay, so now that you've finished your foundation chain for your blanket, now we're going to do our first row. And the first stitch we're going to use is double crochet. Some of you might know it as single crochet, depending whether you use UK or US terms. So I'm probably going to keep calling it double crochet because that's the most familiar term for me. So I've got a, a shorter chain here. You're obviously going to have a longer chain, but to start our first row, if you remember, I mentioned using a larger hook. So we're going to take the five millimeter hook out, keep it well away so that you don't pick it up by mistake. That's one of my tricks. And we're now going to go on to a four millimeter hook. So we've got our chain, we've got our hook. And when you're starting um, your first row, you have to have what's called a turning chain. So your blanket asks for 133 chain, but only 132 will be for the actual blanket. 
the 133rd stitch is your turning chain. So what I'm going to do, if you can see, we've got the chain here. We don't count that little loop on the hook. So we don't count that. We don't go into the first chain. We put our hook and we push it into that first chain on the row. And we put the yarn round and pull through. So now we've got two stitches on the hook, yarn round again and pull through two. And that's your first double crochet. So then we're going to go into the next stitch. You'll see the chains are made up of three loops. You've got a loop here at the bottom and you've got two loops at the top. The best way to get a really neat edge is to push that hook down so you've got one loop below and you can see you've got two loops above. You're going to put the yarn round your hook and pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn round and pull through. We're going to carry on exactly like that. So we're going to be pushing your hook through, yarn round, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn round, pull through. I'll keep doing a few more. So it's yarn round, pull through. And what we don't want to do is pull this too tightly. So just be relaxed when you're doing it, because if you get a bit stressed, you're going to make this really tight. So pushing your hook through, yarn round, pull through, and through those two loops. And you can see we're getting this really nice double crochet stitch. I have to say this first row is the hardest, working into the chain. Once you get done a few more rows, you'll find it much, much easier. So you're pushing through, pulling through, yarn round, pull through two. And I'm just going to keep on going until I get to the end of the row and then I'll show you how to turn. Right, so I've come to the end of my row. So you've just got to check that you go into that very, very last stitch and you can see you've got those two loops there. So we're going to go under, yarn round and pull through and yarn round hook through two. So what I'm going to show you now is how to do a treble stitch, a treble crochet. So that's a treble crochet using UK terms and it's a double crochet using US terms. Now, when we did our double crochet, we did one chain as a turning chain. When we do a treble, we do three, so one, two, three. And the number of chains depends on the height of the stitch. So one chain is the height of a double crochet, but three chain is the height of a treble. So we're going to turn that round now, and we've got those three chains, and we're not going to work into those chains. We're going to work into the next stitch along, which is here. So we'll count down, we've got one, two, three, and we're going to go into the fourth stitch there. Now the difference between a double and a treble is that we do a wind round the hook first. So if you remember with the treble, we, we did, with the double we didn't do that, but with the treble we do. So we've got our three chain, we, we've put the yarn around the hook, and then just like before, we're going to put the hook under the stitch and we can see two loops. We're going to pull the yarn through and this time we've got three loops on the hook and that's because you did that extra yarn round there. So three loops on the hook, we're going to go yarn round again and we're going to pull through two. We've now got two on the hook, yarn round again and pull through two. So this gives a much taller stitch. So now we're going to start again. So remember, yarn round the hook first, push through, yarn round and pull, and we've got three on the hook. Yarn round, pull through two, yarn round, pull through two. And you can see how this is growing already. So again, it's yarn round the hook first, underneath your stitch, yarn round, pull through, yarn round, pull through two, yarn round, pull through two. Once you get used to this, it's a great stitch, it's perfect for blankets and things grow really quickly with it. So I've pulled the yarn up, yarn round, pull through two, pull through two. So I'm 
going to carry on along this little swatch and then I'll come back to you at the end and show you exactly how to finish. Right, so I'm almost at the end of my row, so I'll just do a quick recap. So remembering it's yarn round your hook, under those two loops, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, through two, through two. And you can see now how this is beginning to take shape. It's got some body to it, so it's much nicer to work with. So yarn round now, and we've got that very last stitch there. So we're making sure we go into those two loops, yarn round, pull through, through two, through two. And you can see how nice and straight the sides are because we've done those starting chains. Right, so this is the exciting part now. You've finished the first little band of your blanket and we're going to change colour. So I'll just show you how to do that. Now when you change colour, you actually change it on the last stitch of the row before you need that colour, if that makes sense. So I'm showing you on here, at the moment I've got this lovely cream yarn. I'm going to start the last stitch, and I'm going, this is a treble stitch, and I'm pulling the yarn through, and I pull through two, but then I stop. I don't carry on with this yarn and pull through. What I'm going to do is cut that yarn, and you need to leave enough to neaten that tail in later. So we'll move the cream out of the way and we're going to start this lovely pink yarn. So again, when you start a ball of yarn, you're going to take the band off and then if you look at the bottom there, you can see you've got this little loop all ready to pull. So, and we're going to start this yarn. So we've got two loops on the hook we're going to put the new yarn. So instead of putting this yarn round and pulling through two, we're going to actually put the pink yarn round. So it's the pink yarn round the hook, and then we pull through like that. What I do, I just do a chain, just to anchor it a little bit. Then I'm just going to put my work flat, and you can see now you've got the yarn that you're now going to use. You've got the tail from the cream yarn and you've got the pink tail and we're just going to tie a little knot. I actually do two. So when you hear me talking about tails that's what I'm referring to and they're just going to stay there to be sewn in and neatened later and then you just carry on with whatever stitch you're going to do. So for this I'm just going to turn it and do a treble stitch And you can see that that's a really neat way of changing your yarn colour. And we're going to do it that way on every single change of yarn when we're changing it to do different stitches. So now we're going to work um, a band of griddle stitch in our blanket. And this is made up of double crochets or single crochets for um, are people who are using the US terms and treble crochets or double crochets if you are using US terms. So I'm going to use the UK as I'm talking to you. So I'll be using double crochets and trebles. So if you look at your pattern, it'd be quite handy when you're watching this tutorial to have the pattern to hand as well because you may not be used to seeing instructions giving in brackets. So when you're looking at griddle stitch, the first instruction is to do a chain one. Let me check. I wasn't sure whether I'd done one then. So there we go. A chain one. And we'll turn our work around. And then we're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch. So if you remember with double crochet, we leave that first chain. That's our turning chain. And we'll do a double crochet in the first stitch. So that's pushing the hook through yarn round, two loops on the hook, and pull through two. 
And then you'll notice on your pattern, it says, well, there is a bracket and it will say one double crochet in the next stitch and then one treble in the next stitch. So we're up to the treble. So remember, yarn round hook, under the two loops, yarn round, pull through, through two, through two. And then the bracket closes, but after the bracket, it gives you an instruction to continue to do that until the end of the row. So we're going to continue to do one double crochet and one treble, and we're going to keep repeating that. So the next stitch is a double crochet, and then the next stitch is a treble. Whoops, sorry. I'm just going to do that one again. So yarn round, under the two loops, yarn round, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and now we're going to do our double crochet. We're just going to keep repeating it. So now I'm going to do a treble, and then a double crochet, and then a treble, and then a double, and we're just going to continue working along. Now I've done a little swatch here. So if you look, you can see the lovely texture because on the next row, where we've done a treble, we do a double, and where we've done a double, we do a treble. So you get this lovely, lovely stitch. So I'm just going to carry on. So I was on to a treble stitch. If you forget where you're up to, you, it's so easy just to look back and you can see where you've done your treble and where you've done your double. And you're just going to steadily work along the row. So it's amazing how this, those two basic stitches, double crochet and treble, make this beautiful textured work. So already, you're only really just starting the first part of the blanket, but you've um, mastered, you're onto your third stitch. And I'm just going to carry on working along. So shall I meet you at the end? Right, so I'm at my last stitch now, which should be a treble stitch. Now, if it isn't a treble stitch, you need just to look back along your row in case you've, um, you've missed a stitch out. So you should end with a treble. There we go, so I've done a treble. I've made sure I've gone into that very end stitch, so I've got a lovely straight side. And then I'm going to do a turning chain of one, and turn round, and because we start each row with a double crochet, you can, and we've ended that row on a treble crochet, the first stitch we go into there to do our double is on the top of that treble. So that's our double crochet, and then into the next stitch, we're going to do a treble crochet, and we're just repeating that all the way along. So we should start with a double, and we should end with a treble because we've got an even number of stitches. So it's a double crochet under those two loops and a treble crochet. And you can see how that builds. So we have the first stitch, our double on top of the treble, the treble on top of the double and so on. We've got this lovely textured stitch. Right, we're about to start another new stitch and this is V-stitch. And V-stitch is really just groups of trebles which you've already um, worked on on previous tutorials. So as with just an ordinary treble, we're going to do three chain and that is the height of our stitch. Then I'm going to turn the work round and normally we would be going to go into the fourth chain on the row. So we'd count down one, two, three, and then that would be our fourth stitch. But with V-stitch, we're going to miss that one out and we're going to go to the next one. So we're not going to go to the stitch at the base of our chain. We're going to go into the next one. So yarn round hook underneath those two loops, yarn round, pull through, three on the hook, 
yarn round, pull through two, pull through two. And then we're going to go into the same stitch again, yarn round hook, into that stitch we've already worked, pull the yarn through, pull it up, through two, through two. And you can see we've actually made a little V with those two trebles. The reason we've missed that very first stitch is this chain three counts as a stitch. And if we worked into that other stitch, we would be adding one stitch each row, which we don't want to do. So we've done our two trebles. We're now going to put the yarn around our hook again, and we're going to miss, we're skipping the next stitch. And we're going to go into this one here, push through, yarn round hook, pull through, through two, through two. And again, we're going to go into that same stitch and we're going to work another treble. And this is how we get this lovely V-stitch look. Go to miss the next one. And then we're going to work two more trebles. The reason that we're missing is we are working two stitches in one stitch. So by missing a stitch, we keep the same stitch count and our work stays nice and flat, our edges stay straight and we're not gaining any stitches. So I'm working along here, missing a stitch, working into the next stitch and making two more treble stitches. It's a really pretty stitch this and your work will grow very quickly. So as you can see, I'm working two stitches in the same stitch, missing one, and then I'm going to work two more trebles. So this is the row when we're sort of setting the pattern and we're actually having to count the stitches that we're missing. When we do the next row, it is a little bit easier, which you'll see shortly. So we miss a stitch and we work two in the next stitch. So I'm going to carry on along here and I'll meet you at the end and show you how I finish. Right, so I'm almost at the end of the row and I've got two stitches left. So I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to work one treble into that very last stitch. Remember how important it is to make sure you get right into that last stitch and then because we're working trebles, we have to do a chain three. So I'm going to do my chain three and turn. And the second row of V-stitch is even easier. We don't have to do any counting and missing stitches because what we're going to do now is just work in between our V, in between those two trebles. So we've worked our three chain, we're going to work in the middle of that V and work one treble Oops, I've lost the stitch. Shall we just start that again? If that happens to you, rather than struggle, just undo it and just start again. That's the beauty of crochet. Nothing's going to come unraveled. So I've done two treble, you can see, in the middle of that V-stitch. Yarn round hook, and I'm going to go straight into the next V. And it's as easy as that. We're just going to work along this row just working two trebles into the, the V we made on the previous row. So we don't have to worry about counting stitches that we're going to skip. We're just going to keep working along. Oops. And we've got another V. So as you can see, it does look very pretty. So I'm going to carry on and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I've got to the end of my row. So I'm just going to finish off with my last V and remember at the very beginning, I mentioned that the turning chain counted as a stitch. So what we do now, we work a treble into the very top of that turning chain. And that's how we finish the row off. So you can see how lovely and straight it is. 
and there you can see the two rows of the V-stitch. So we're, we're all done. Right, now we're going to start our bobble stitch. And um, bobble stitch is one of my favorite stitches, so I'm going to really enjoy showing you this one. So we're going to do a chain one to start, and then we're going to turn our work round. And when you work a bobble stitch, you actually work on the back of your work, and then the bobble pops out and is on the right side. So we've done our chain once, we've done our turning chain. First stitch is a double crochet. So we're going to do our double crochet. And now we're going to use trebles. So you've already been practicing trebles, so this should be nice and easy. We're going to do a treble. We're going to pull the yarn through, and we're going to pull through two. And this is where it changes. We're going to start another treble, and we're going to go under the two loops, pull through, and pull through again. And we're going to start another treble, and go under the two loops, and pull through, yarn through two. At the moment we've got four loops on the hook, and we want to do one more, all into the same stitch, and pull through two. And we've now got five loops on the hook, and then we put yarn round, and we pull through all five, and that's our very first bobble stitch. So bobble stitches sound a bit frightening, but they're not at all, and they just give a great effect, add great texture. So now we're going to go to the next stitch and just do a double crochet. So one, and we're going to go into the next one and do another double crochet. So in between each bobble, we're working double crochets. So let's start that bobble again. So yarn round hook into the stitch, pull the yarn through, yarn round, pull through two. Then we stop that treble and we start another treble. And we're going through and we pull through two loops. And then we start again, yarn round, all into the same stitch, pull through. And we've got four loops on the hook, so we know we've just got one more to do yarn round, pull through, and we've got five loops on the hook. So yarn round, and we'll pull through all of those stitches. And then if you remember, it's two double crochet in between. And then let's do one more bobble. So we're going to go through two, going to yarn round, push through again, pull through, yarn round through two. So we're working all this into one stitch. Push through and pull through two. We've got four stitches on our hook. Yarn round, under and pull through. And then we do our last, pull through there. So we've got our five stitches, yarn round, pull through two, and then we'll do two double crochets. Whoops, I nearly dropped my needle. So I'm just going to turn the work round because I'm sure you're dying to see what the bobbles look like. And you can see we've got these lovely bobbles which give great texture to our work. So I will carry on to the end of the row and meet you there. Right, so I've got to the end of my row and I've got one stitch left, so make sure you have as well, and that is a double crochet. So I hope you've enjoyed doing that row. Now we're going to do one chain and turn around. Now if you remember, I said when we work the bobble, we have to be doing it on the back of our work. So in between each row of bobbles, we need to do a row of double crochet. So we miss the first chain out, as always, that's our turning chain. And then we're going to go to the first stitch and do one double crochet. Now, when you get to the bobble stitch, if you just turn your work towards you a little bit, can you see, you can very easily see those two loops there, because we don't want to make any stitches. We just want to carry on. So it's under those two loops and it's a double crochet. And then if you remember, we had two double crochets in between each bobble. And they're really easy to see 
but just sometimes if you're not careful you can pick up an extra loop over the bobble so if you turn the work forward and there you can see those two loops and that's the top of the bobble and we do a double crochet and then we've got our stitches here and you're just going to work all the way along doing double crochet and then when you get to the end you'll do your turning chain of one and then you can start your next bobble row and hopefully that second row you'll feel much more confident so there we go I leave you to finish your double crochet row right, right we've got uh, a new color and a new stitch so now we're going to do a granny stripe so it's again made up of trebles so we're going to do three chain to start and that's the height of our of our treble then we're going to turn around and then with the granny stripe we actually work we do work into the first stitch of the row so we miss the first three chain and then we're going to do a treble into that first stitch there and then we're going to miss two stitches so one two and we're going to work let's make sure I'm going into the right place there we go we're going to work three treble into this next stitch so there's one all into the same stitch there's two trebles and there's another treble so that is a little cluster of three stitches so we've got a space there where we've left two stitches and now we've done three in that one stitch so it's yarn round hook again all set for the next trebles we miss the next two one two and we go into that next stitch so this is sort of setting the pattern a bit like when we did the V stitch so we're going to work three trebles again all into the same stitch miss two and another three so I'm going to carry on along this row working three trebles into the same stitch with missing two stitches in between so if you carry on your row and I'll meet you at the end all right well I've got to the end of my row apart from the last two stitches so I hope you're all the same and I'm going to skip a stitch so I'm going to miss that next stitch and in this last stitch I'm going to work one treble and then if you remember we're going to again do our three chain our turning chain to get to the height of our stitch and now we're going to work in spaces rather than stitches which we've, we've not done before so we've always been working into these stitches and under the two loops what we're going to do now is you see you've got a space here you're going to work one treble in that space and then we're going to move across to the next space which is in between those three little clusters of trebles and we're going to do three trebles in this space so this is where you're going to get really quick and speed up it's such a quick stitch so your blanket will really grow when you start doing your um, your granny stripes so we're going to move over to this space here and work three more trebles see how often we use trebles in different stitches and we get such different effects from it so this is a really nice way of working so i'm continuing with these three trebles missing out any of the stitches there just working in the spaces and then i'm going to work along so i'll carry on until the end and leave you to carry on with yours and i'll meet you at the end Right, well I've got to the end of my row, so I hope you have, so I'm 
just now going to do a treble at the top of that chain three where we started. And just pull that through. Oopsie daisy. Sometimes you can just put the tip of your hook through your yarn, but there we go, I've straightened that out. So you can see how working into the top of that three chain keeps a lovely straight edge. So you'll carry on now and you'll do a chain three to turn and the pattern's all set out for you. Again, you're just going to work a one treble in that space there. And then you're going to carry on working along in those spaces. And I'll just put another three treble in here to show you, and then I'll leave you to finish your row. So you can see just how quickly that grows. Each row is about a centimetre, so your blanket will really be growing now. So I'll leave you to finish your row. Right, so the next stitch we're going to do is berry stitch. And it's similar to bobble stitch, but not quite as prominent. So again, like bobble stitch, we have to be working on the wrong side of our, of our piece of work. So I'm just going to do that chain one, and then we'll turn it around and we'll start our stitches. So remember that chain one is our turning chain, so we never go into that. And then I'm going to do two double crochets at the beginning. And now I'm going to start the berry stitch, which is similar to doing a treble, just a couple of little differences. So we'll put the yarn around our hook as they were doing a treble. And then we undo those two loops and pull the yarn up. And this is the main difference. If you were doing a treble now, you'd put the yarn round and pull through two hook, two loops. But what we want to do is put the yarn round and just pull through one loop. And then we're going to put the yarn round again, go back in the same stitch, draw another loop up. So now if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook put our yarn round again and we'll pull through and that's our berry stitch. So the next stitch is a double crochet and we're going to do one double crochet in between each berry stitch. So yarn round hook into the next stitch, pull a loop through, yarn round and remember just through one loop because instinctively you're going to want to pull through two because I know I am. So we're just going to pull through the one loop, then it's yarn round the hook, through again, pull a loop up and we've got one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook, yarn round and pull through. And then we follow that with a double crochet again. And then we're going to do a berry stitch again. So we're going to have three loops on the hook, yarn round and just through that first loop, yarn round again, back into the same, same stitch, pull through, five loops on the hook and pull through. Just give it a little wiggle. I'll just do that another time to show you. So it's a double crochet in between, yarn round as if you're doing a treble pull through, yarn round and just through one loop, yarn round again, pull through, five loops on the hook and we're going to pull through them all like that. Whoops, there we go, nearly missed one. And now we're going to do our double crochet. So I'm going to carry on till the end of the row and I'll meet you there. the end of my row and I've got one stitch left and I'm going to make a double crochet in that stitch and as you can see the sides are staying nice and straight I'm going to do one chain and turn now if you remember that we do the berry stitch on the wrong side so the same as with a bubble stitch you now have to do a row of double crochets across the top 
of your berries. So we're just going to go into each stitch and they're very, it's very easy to see where to place your hook. So it's underneath the two loops and you're just going to work to the end and then you're all set to start your next row of berry stitch. And you can see it's this lovely, lovely soft textured stitch. So I'll leave you to finish your double crochets and then to start your next berry stitch row. Right, so we're now going to do another different stitch, another new stitch, and this is a half treble. So with a half treble, we just need to do two chain because it's not as tall as a treble. So instead of doing three, we're going to do two. And then we put our yarn round our hook into the first stitch, yarn round, pull through. So we've got three stitches on our hook, yarn round, and we're going to pull through all three in one go. So we actually miss out a step. So yarn round, through the stitch, pull the yarn through, and if we were going to do a treble, we'd be putting another yarn round, wouldn't we? And only going through two. But with a half treble, we do the half, we do the round, and we pull through all three stitches. So it's yarn round hook, underneath those two loops, bring our stitch up, three on the hook, yarn round, and pull through all three. So, I'll just go a few more stitches for you to get used to it. So we've got three on the hook, yarn round and pull through all three. So this is, um, it's quite good for the garments because it's actually a closer stitch. It's not as tight as a double crochet, but it also works great to put some interest in the blanket, just another, another change of stitch. So putting through three, yarn round under the two loops, pull through three on your hook and pull through all three. And I'm just going to carry on to the end of the row and um, I will meet you there. Right, so I'm at the end of my row, so I hope you are too. And I'm going to go into that last stitch there, pull the yarn through, three on the hook, and pull through all three. And then if you remember, it's two chain as your turning chain because the half treble isn't as tall as the treble. Then yarn round hook, under those two loops, pull through and yarn through all three. It's best not to have it yarn it's too tight for this, otherwise it can be a bit tricky to pull through all three at the same time. But there we go, yarn round hook underneath those loops, pull your yarn through, three on your hook, and through all three. Great, so I will leave you to finish your half treble rows. I hope you enjoyed watching those tutorials and that you feel all raring, you know, raring to go now. And um, I can't wait to see how you get on. So we've also got a third R um, Facebook page and it's third R Make Along. So if you could share some of your progress, that would be lovely. I'd love to see how you're getting on. If you tag any of your images with hashtag Serdar Makes, that would be absolutely great. And if you are stuck or you want a bit of advice, put a question on the group. Or if you're getting on really well, tell us how you're getting on because little hints and tips, things that you're doing will really help other people if they're struggling. So I can't wait to see how you get on and I'm really looking forward to talking to you all next week. Mm -hmm.